Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Today we're going to have another episode of Northwoods Scientist. And I want to clear up some questions that came out on some of my other videos. So let's take a couple of minutes and talk about the sun and light. <music> Well, the first question I have is from this gentleman, Chris Miramondi here. He asks, why do the rays of the sun strike the earth in a parallel fashion? And could I do a video trying to explain this? Well, I think that's absolutely a fantastic question. Let's see if we can figure it out. Okay, so let's see if we can make some sense of this. So we've got the sun out here. And then over here, we're going to have the earth. Now, from Earth, the size of the Sun is about one-half of a degree. So, it appears to be really quite small, and it's more or less a point source of light. So, the difference between the top and the bottom of the Sun is about half a degree, which really is negligible and you're not going to see much of a difference from light coming from one edge of the sun versus the center of the sun. That would be a quarter of a degree different. So let's now go ahead and have a look at some angles. We know that the sun is in orbit around, or excuse me, the earth is in orbit around the sun, and we know the distance from the earth to the sun is about 94 million miles. So, how would we figure out how many degrees we would expect from any two points on the orbit to the sun, like this? Can we calculate an angle? Sure we can. Let's have a look. So, we know that if we have a dot and we draw a circle around it, that can kind of represent an orbit. Okay, so here we've got the Earth out here. Now, this distance right here is 94 million miles. So if we apply our math to find out what the length of the orbit is, we find that 2 times the radius times pi will equal the circumference of this orbit. Now, if we take that number and we divide it by 360, we can find out how far is it along one degree of that orbit. So let's go ahead and do that math real quick. So we've got 94 million miles times 2 that will give us the diameter of the Earth's orbit times pi. That will give us the circumference of the Earth's orbit. And then we divide that by 360. And that will give us the distance along one degree. And if we do that, we find that that's 1.64 million miles. Now, if we divide that by 60, we're going to find out the number of minutes in that million miles. And that will work out to 27,343 miles. So, that's actually pretty straightforward. But just in case you don't have a good grasp of what this all represents, let's use another common example. Say we have somebody with a rifle, and they're shooting at a target. Okay, now the distance to that target is 100 yards. Now, 
that's the same as saying that this rifle right here is in the middle of a circle that is 200 yards in diameter because the radius is this 100 yards. So if we look at this, and I want to find the circumference of that circle. It's 200 yards times pi. Okay. And then if we want to find the number of feet in one degree, we divide that by 360. And that will give us one degree of that circle. If we divide that in turn by 60, we get one minute of angle. Now, in this situation where we're dealing with 100 yards, we're dealing with a minute of angle that is 1.04 inches at 100 yards. Now, let's go back to the solar system and put this into play again. So, we've got the sun out here. We're going to have the Earth over here. And then we've got part of the orbit. It goes like this. Okay? Now, the distance from here to here is going to be 27,343 miles. Now, the angle of the sunlight going from here to here is going to be one minute of angle. That is one sixtieth of a degree. So, if you look at the angle of the light here, it will only be one minute of angle different than here. Yet, this is 27,343 miles. The Earth itself is only about 8,000 miles in diameter, so we're only dealing with one-third of a minute, or 20 seconds. So, as a result, right here and here, the angle of the sunlight hitting both of these objects at the top and the bottom of the Earth will only be one-third of a degree different, or 20 arc seconds. That is essentially parallel. Recall that if this was an inch at 100 yards, this would be one-third of an inch, that big, at 100 yards with your naked eye. Okay, so you can see that essentially, if you were to look 100 yards at two tacks or two pins that are only a third of an inch apart, they would be in the same direction from your eye. You would have a lot of difficulty trying to tell them apart from a single point. And as a result of that, when we get light that comes in to the Earth, the light that comes in up here is so close to the light that comes in down there that these lines right here are essentially parallel. Now, there's another way that you can tell that this light is parallel. Actually, several other ways, and I'll give you a couple of them. Now, if you were to use a magnifying glass and try and focus light coming in in a parallel fashion like this, that light would come out to a single point. And we all know that this is what actually occurs on Earth. If that light instead came in in a non-parallel fashion, say something like this, you would not be able to focus that light sharply. It would be a lot more dis disjoined. You wouldn't be able to focus it to a single point like this. 
Now here's another example that's very good. Say we have the Earth right here, and up here we have the Moon. Now, the Sun is out here, If the light came in absolutely parallel, like this, one half the moon would be lit, and one half the earth would be lit. And this direction right here would be 90 degrees. However, this isn't what actually happens. What actually happens is the moon is some 238,000 miles away, and as a result, there is a very slight angle. This is a right angle here. However, this is not a right angle. This is actually 89 degrees, 51 minutes. And as a result of that being a little bit off of 90 degrees, we can actually back calculate to where these lines would cross. And that is how we found one of the ways we found the distance to the sun. Because that angle works out that this distance right here is one three hundred and eighty fifth of that distance there. And since we know the earth or the moon is about two hundred and forty thousand miles from the earth, if we multiply that by three hundred and eighty five, we come up with about ninety four million miles, which is the distance to the sun. That's a pretty cool trick, isn't it? Well, guys, thank you very much for stopping by and joining me on this discussion on the rays of the sun and why they're parallel. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. The next video coming out will be on how we determined the speed of light. It's going to be actually a very interesting program. So hit that bell and make sure you get notified when that video comes out in a few days. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Take care.